Hello, we're going to continue the UEFI development here, getting into the first video proper, some actual coding, some development. Uh, I'm going to be writing in the next, well, this set of videos, how to make a GPT disk image through a program, a C program, that is. So in the hopes of having something on Linux and Windows that I can build valid disk images in order to boot UEFI applications, which will need a file named bootx64.efi located under the EFI and boot, directories within an EFI system partition, that'll be part of this GPT disk image. Because it's not like the legacy BIOS boot where you can just write 512 bytes to a flat binary file and boot from it. Well, MBR or otherwise, you can just write 55AA and hex to the end of that disk sector and have it work. That doesn't work anymore. We need specialized disk images, either an ISO or another disk image for emulating a hard disk. And that's what I'll be doing. So I'll make a C program to do that. It'll have a protective MBR. Since it is backwards compatible, it isn't mutually exclusive, especially if you have UEFI CSM compatibility support module boot. Um, I do not have that support on some of my devices, but we still have a protective MBR for a valid GPT disk image, and that's all right. But we'll include that. We'll have primary and secondary GPT headers and tables for describing the partitions within the disk. We'll have an EFI system partition and a basic data are just an empty other partition. So we'll have two, two partitions there defined within tables that are defined by headers <laughs> um, succeeding the protective MBR. And that's basically what the disk image is. You have one sector for an MBR, you have a couple for headers, and you have some more for partitions that you're defining within this image, within this disk. Um, a disk image being a file is nothing more than a series of bytes. And how does that series of bytes do anything? Well, we have programs to work with this specific series of bytes and give context to it and structure. But the bytes themselves hold no meaning. But the programs that work with them think they do. And that's how, you know, disk images are part of that. But anyway, that's getting into, you know, philosophy there, maybe. <laughs> that's all right. But yeah, this is also to learn with the UEFI spec and go along and have the exact same program buildable, runnable on Windows and Linux, assuming MinGW mainly for Windows. Um, or if you have MSYS2 or something that emulates a Unix environment, that's fine. Um, how do I verify these things? Just have a second opinion. I'm going to be using SGDisk. Sometimes this website, sometimes this site does not load for me, but it does today, so that's good. So GPTF disk, uh, or GDisk, as it's commonly known. I'm going to be I'm going to be using the scriptable version or SGDisk just to check. But if you want to download that, let's go to the obtaining GPTF disk page. I'll have links to this site in the description. Uh, but usually you download it from SourceForge. And I'll just go there. So if you're on Windows, you just download this from here. If you're on Linux, you may have stuff in your repos. So on my Linux, I just, I have some specs here for VHD, which I'll make as like a part of a flag later. And I have a fat file system doc and the UEFI spec. But for GDisk, or in my case, SGDisk, that is a standalone thing. Yours might be included under the regular GDisk or CG disk or something else. Um, but you know, if that's there, you can get that. Otherwise, if you're on Windows or you want it from the internet, you can go grab it from this guy's site. If you are on Windows, it'll come with um, SG disk 32 and 64, and you might have to add that to your path as you download it somewhere. But SG disk 32, I don't think it's version, we can just do help, it's, it's the same thing, or 64. It's gonna be the same thing here, so that's all right. Um, but what am I going to do with that? Well, let's say we want to verify an image. I don't have an image right now, but we can use dash capital O to verify an MBR or to look at MBR info and lowercase p will look at GPT info. Of course, I don't have a disk image, so I can't do that, but that's what those would do. So we'll be messing with that just for a second opinion that we're writing the right things and it'll also verify that we write, you know, CRC info and stuff correctly. But all right, what am I planning to do? Uh, probably this video I'll just do, this will be like an intro to it, an intro after the previous intro, right? This will just be um, writing a basic make file and writing the MBR probably. Then after that, after this video, I'll probably go on and write the GPT headers and the GPT tables. Those will include UUIDs or GUIDs for version four, variant two, just because it's kind of easiest to just get random numbers with RAND and SRAND or what have you. Um, rather than messing with the time and <laughs> getting the time and, you know, parsing out the bits with that. Uh, we getting cyclic redundancy checking for CRC32 values. You can just copy code from the internet for that, which is probably what I'll do. 
Then after that, we'll have an EFI system partition with FAT32 file system code, not a full FAT driver, but enough to write EFI boot and root folders. And this is just going over clusters and minimum sizes for the disk image according to FAT sizes, but that I'll go over that more later. Um, if I find a boot x64.efi file, I'm going to assume for x64 that's what you want to add into the EFI system partition, so it'll boot up automatically. So if that's found later on, I'll just add that automatically if it's in the current directory, just as a little quality of life thing. The basic data partition will already really be done, just as a formality, I put it here as a, a checkbox item. But just being an empty partition, really, we can just leave it as all zeros and it'll, it'll be fine. Um, past that point, I'll probably make a image file for the disk image, just holding like the size. Otherwise, if we make an EFI application and we want to make like an installer for a bootloader for an OS and we want to write to a different disk, if we write this image to a USB or something, I need to know how big this image is and there's not really a good way or an easy way of doing that. So I can save a file inside of our file system that has some info like how big the disk image is. Then if we can get uh, protocols and handles for the volume and everything for this disk image later within an EFI application. If we want to write an installer, then we can read this size of the disk image from our USB, we'll say, and we can write that from memory to another drive. And, you know, we can mess with that. That might be interesting. Um, other than that, I'll have some flags that we can set, like for the overall size of our disk image or the size of the ESP and data partitions. I'll have stuff to add a a fixed virtual hard disk, sort of a .vhd file, so it can be natively mountable in Windows. Of course, if you use Rufus or something, it can recognize raw disk images, but if you want to be able to add and delete files from the EFI system partition, and we don't write that in this tool, I might add to write a file in this tool, but maybe not like add and delete stuff to keep the scope down. If you want a different way of doing that, we can write a, a VHD footer to our file, and it will be natively mountable in Windows. And Linux has other options as well for mounting an ESP partition, which I wrote a couple scripts for that in the repo, but that's all right. Um, but that's the basic gist, so I'll get on to writing the MBR and stuff. I wanted to start with a, a blank repo here, so I just have the docs, because I'm going to be rewriting the tool just to show that uh, I'm really starting from scratch as well here. Although I don't know if you'll have SSH access, but that's all right. I'll just grab this, it's UEFI GPT image creator, and I'll CD into that. So I have this here. So I have a write GPT.C, this was the previous version, well this was a rewrite of the previous version, but I found that I could do things a little bit differently and slightly better and hopefully shorter videos and like my main function is messy and stuff, so I'll, I'll be, you know, mostly writing the same stuff, but hopefully explaining better on video right now, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So I have a make file, but I'm going to delete it and re remake everything, kind of. So we'll do write gpt, I'll say old.c, and I'll have a new file, write gpt.c, and I'll also make, you know, just a blank make file, which might be the same as the old one, but we'll just write it here for a for the sake of argument. So if I want to build a basic C project, let's say I don't want it to use uh, GNU-isms or anything, we'll do POSIX. I'm not going to mess with the suffixes or anything because I like how it comes out of the box for C projects, so we won't be doing that. Um, phony, let's say we'll have all in clean targets. Clean will remove like a, a target that we set and all will make a target that we set. So let's say we have something for that. We'll call our, our EXE, if you will, write GPT and all will make that target, and clean will remove that target. By default, we'll add some other stuff to remove later. Yeah, by default, uh, the make file has built-in support for C projects, so if you say to make a certain target here as a prerequisite, it'll look to, it'll find the name, and it'll look for that, as well as source files that end in .c and .h and stuff. So .c, it'll say is probably going to be meant by default to make this as a target. Make has that support built in, even under, you know, POSIX. So that's what I'm going to be going for. We don't need to do anything else to build the target if we have a source file called writegpt.c. So I'm going to be going off that. It will also use C flags by default, even if you set your own. So let's say we're doing, I like the C17 standard because C23 is not out yet. 
And I like having Unicode or UCS2 <laughs> support with like U string literals and things. So I'll be using C17 because it's C11 with some, some fixes there. I'll have all extra, and just for extra warnings, we'll have pedantic. Some warnings don't show up unless you use some optimization levels. So I'm going to do O2. And you can strip off debug info or you can do G or stuff. We might add other flags later. But right now, I'll just start with these. So I'll keep those and we'll have the right GPT.C. Let's start with just the hello world example, just to make sure that things are working. We'll add some flags in, some command line flags later, but we don't need that right now. So we'll just say, we're gonna be testing. If we do make, it'll find that. It'll say called with non ISO C99 option because, oh, because I have the CC value. Yes, that's true. So it does that by default. I'm going to set a CC value here. You can, I like GCC or Clang. So I'll just say we all, we'll have both and I'll just specify one here. We'll go with GCC. There we go, and it'll use that. So it'll do CC and then C flags and then dash O for the target, right? As a default rule for, for C programs. So that'll be all right. And we have our right GPT there. So if we do that testing, okay, we're good. We made a project, all right. <laughs> but I do think that's cool that you can just specify a target and it'll look for the .c source and build it automatically. That's pretty nice. But let's, let's go ahead and make an MBR. Let's say we'll have a file that we pass around and we want to make that, right? So let's say, I'll call it image and we'll open a file. I'll probably have a flag later to set the name of the image. I, I know I will, so. That is one thing I might make a global, unless I want to pass it around. I might make it like a global variable. Some things I will, because I'll have different functions for each section of the disk image or flags or things. And it's just easier, instead of passing them around literally everywhere, I'll just have it, some things be global, so I try not to do too many of these. So that's all right. We'll say we have a default image name. I like test.image. You can rename it what you want. Some things like VirtualBox work better with other suffixed files because they assume this is going to be a floppy, but that's okay. So we'll say we're going to open for, I don't know, reading and writing maybe. Writing and reading. We'll say it's for binary. That'll be all right. If for some reason we can't open it, that would be bad. So I'll have some basic error handling in a few parts like this. I'll print error and we'll say could not open file, whatever the image is going to be because that would be bad. We can return one. I might be using malloc and stuff later, so I might as well include standard live, and then we can get access to error, success, and failure macros, which should just be zero and one, but that's all right. Assuming we succeeded, we can do success. If we fail, we can do failure. We cannot have colons, but semicolons, and we can make it, and okay, we'll have a file here called, called a test.image, right? No, no, we don't because we didn't do anything with it, I guess. Because we didn't run the thing, that's why. You gotta run the thing first. There we go, empty file. <laughs> empty file test.image. So okay, let's make an MBR. Let's say we have different sections of the disk we're gonna write to. I might make some functions for that. Let's say we have a pass or fail condition for these functions for each section of our disk image we're gonna do. So we'll say write MBR, protective MBR, and I'll pass in the file pointer. So we'll do that. I can even call it image there still. That's fine. By default, we can say we'll return. And if we have an error condition, we can return false. So if we don't write the MBR from main here, given our image, that would be bad. And we could just say could not write. We'll say it'll be a protective MBR for this file. Yeah, that'll be all right. Return exit failure. But let's assume we do want to write that. So, okay, we need to know what an MBR is. It would just be, let's say we have a C struct that we're going to write to memory here. And it's, the info is contained within the UEFI spec, which I'll look at in a moment. But we'll say we have a struct here. It'll be 512 bytes, but I'm going to make sure we don't have extra padding between things and make this packed just in case. So, we'll say it's MBR, although UEFI likes to uh, yell at you because of Microsoft influence, so they have master boot record, I think, but I'll just call it MBR here. And we'll have an MBR, and then later on we'll 
we'll just set some lines here. Later on, we'll write it. So let's say we're gonna write to our image later, uh, which would be the address of that. It'll be whatever size it is. We can write one of those, or we can check how big it is by writing one byte for this many uh, items <laughs> to our image. So later we can check if we did write that many bytes or not. So if it's not size of MBR, Let's say that would be an error. Just setting this up or else I'm gonna forget later. Probably. So we'll do that. But we have to fill out an MBR and the items within it. So how do we do that? We can look towards the UEFI spec, which conveniently I also have right here. <laughs> I tried to change the colors of it so it's not blinding white. It's like gray and a little yellow, I think. So hopefully it's not bad on your eyes, but chapter five of the UEFI spec, the GUID partition table, GUID meaning globally unique identifier, so acronyms within acronyms within acronyms, master boot record, globally unique ID, partition table disk layout. So GPT is the new hot thing, um, and I don't mean the generative transformer kind, I mean <laughs> the disk image kind. So GUID partition table has logical block addressing instead of CHS cylinder head sector addressing. The OBAs are generally 64 bits, although within the MBR they're 32, but that's for backwards compatibility reasons. Um, it supports a lot more than just four partitions. It has primary and backup tables. It has CRC 32s and GUIDs for unique IDs, of course. And the partitions have names. Human readable, not even machine readable, just human readable. I thought that was funny. And 36 UCS2 characters, by the way, but that's all right. So LBA0, the first sector on the disk, LBA0 based, CHS sector addressing is one based. So LBA0 is CHS sector one, effectively. This is the first logical block, contains a legacy or protective MBR. We'll be doing protective for GPT. Legacy would be for BIOS, legacy booting. The legacy BIOS is, you know, boot code that things booted up with. It had four partitions you could choose from. Generally, you could have one of these be an extended boot partition, which also contained references to at least one partition, I think. So you could kind of linked list chain partitions if you wanted as an extra thing. But generally, it just had four partitions that, and it contained boot code, I guess, to load and jump to these and maybe do other things. But these are the structs that I'm going to lay out. I'm not going to exactly follow what they have, but I'll be generally pretty close. And the reason I won't exactly follow is because in the tables, they don't exactly follow. Like, they combine... On the partition entries, they combine CHS values into three byte, you know, forms here, for example. But I'll lay these things out. So the boot code, generally, the first part of the MBR was for booting, for maybe loading a partition and jumping to it or doing other things. It had a unique signature for the disk, which all these things are going to be zero, <laughs> which is nice. Unknown is, uh, you know, the Pokemon that look like a Q or the other alphabet letters. Now, I don't know what it is for, and they don't either, so that's nice. The partition record are four of these partition table entries. And one of these, probably just the first one, will set for an OS type of EE. The byte EE means GPT protective, so that makes this a protective GPT. Just one of the partitions covers the disk and protects it effectively. Um, after that, we'll have, you know, the boot signature. So really everything's zero. One thing defines a protective GPT, and then we have, you know, the rest up to the LBA size of zero. Um, it says logical block minus 512 because you can have greater than 512 byte OBAs. The UEFI spec supports 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096. I'll, I will try to be LBA sort of agnostic so we can choose one of those sizes, but for SGDisk and other tools and QEMU and stuff, I found that even if I try to use and support like a 4096 byte OBA, my tools don't work with that. So. I'll probably stick to 512, but I'll try to make it like that. I'll try to make the OBA set in one place so that you can try to use other values. It just might not work, but keep that in mind. But I'll try to write things so that it, it should work, even if it doesn't. For the partitions themselves that an MBR defines, they define basically where at on the disk, or this in this case, the disk image the partition is at. So a partition is just a section of a disk. In this case, a section, a section of a file that represents a disk but a section of the disk meaning where at on the disk is this partition, is this section, and how large is this section. So where, where it is is where the starting CHS is, where it ends is the ending CHS, and start minus end would be the length, right? We also have the starting LBA, which for a protective GPT will just be LBA1 or sector CHS sector 2. 
So these both correspond to that, starting CHS2. And for protective GPT, this is defining where basically the GPT header is <laughs> in sector two right after the NPR. So CHS sector two or LBA one. And the size in OBA will be the size of the whole disk. Um, this is a 32-bit max number, so if your disk is larger than that, we will have to sort of clamp it to this value, but that's all right. And the protective GPT partition for a protective MBR basically specifies one of the normal four partitions that it refers to is going to be a protective one that just covers the whole disk, unless it's larger than that 32-bit OBA limit there. So if we have a partition that covers the disk and you have a machine or BIOS or something firmware that doesn't support GPT or doesn't know about it, it should ideally skip over messing with the disk because it doesn't recognize the EEOS type within the partition. So if that partition covers the whole disk, then it won't know what to do with it and ideally it should skip messing with it, thus protecting all your other disk partitions defined by GPT. So that's what this is for. It's going to protect, quote unquote, <laughs> the whole disk here including your UEFI, GPT, and, and, you know, your EFI system partition and everything. Maybe your OS files here in a basic data partition like we'll do. For redundancy purposes, GPT defines two tables and two GPT headers, which will be after the MBR, one at the start of the disk and one at the end of the disk. So if there's data corruption or something, you can reload one or the other from, you know, the other one. And yeah, if your disk isn't or is smaller than the 32-bit limit, then technically part of it will be unprotected or used by something else. So <laughs> I'm just going to define it to be as large as we can go, but we'll see. I might limit it to the actual size of the disk. We'll find out. And we should have protocols that give you info within an EFI application later if you want to mess with that. So okay, we'll write a protective MBR. I'm just going to write or define a struct that has these values in it, maybe similar similar to how they have this laid out here. So I will do that. Since I'm going to have some, uh, some fixed width values like U and AT and the like, I'm gonna include the header for that. Just before I start here, just so you know, standard int, we need that. All right, so I just laid out the structs here, some type defs for these. I got the partitions. Instead of separating out into cylinder head and sector, kind of like the uh, the UEFI spec had it, we're just having arrays of three bytes for the CHS values. And instead of arrays of four bytes, you know, I just did a UN32 Little Indian for the LBAs. And I named things a little bit differently, but that's all we have for those. So MBR will lay that out here. So boot code is going to be zero. I don't need to lay these out explicitly, but I will just for uh, you know knowledge. What's another big word? Edification, <laughs> pedagogical purposes. But the boot code, the MBR signature, and the unknown values can all be zero. So those are fine. Uh, the partitions, I'm only going to lay out the first one. The others I'll just leave as zero, but I'll lay out the first partition here, which the boot indicator I think is zero as well. Yeah, to indicate a non-bootable partition. We'll do that. Starting CHS value is gonna be zero, 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 two, zero, zero to correspond to sector two. And these values specifically are the head value for CHS. The head is in the lowest eight bits. The sector is in the next, um, not eight bits, six bits. <laughs> so the head is in the lowest, I think eight. The sector is in the next six because sector only goes up to zero to 63. And then the head is in the top 10 bits because it goes up to 1024, I think. So yeah, the head goes up to 255 or is it 16? Yeah. I think 0 to 255, sector 0 to 63, and cylinder 0 to 1023. So that's why the bits are laid out like that. And the OS type or the OS indicator is going to be EE for protective, protective MBR, protective GPT for this partition. And again, this specific partition labeled by the MBR is the GPT sort of primary GPT header is what this is defining at sector two right after the MBR. 
Um, the ending CHS is going to be some value. Let's say we have some value here that we'll fill out in a second for however big our disk is. And then we have starting and ending OBA. Starting OBA is going to be one. One, two, three, four, yep. And ending LBA is going to be however big our disk is. Actually, our, our ending CHS we can make just as big as this goes for GPT. For the CHS value, we can say we don't know how big it is. It'll just be as much as we can protect for the disk. But our ending LBA, I'm going to make actually how big our disk is in LBA values. I'll do that. So that'll be all right. I'll just put question mark so it won't compile. <laughs> It'll yell at me. And boot code and BR signature unknown partition. So then we have the boot signature, and that's going to be 55AA or AA55 there. Right. Uh, yeah, set to 0xAA55. Okay. So opposite that. <laughs> so by 510 will be 55, 511 will be AA. Yep. And that's how legacy BIOS boots. If you only have the boot signature as the first 512. Well, 510 to 511th byte on like a disk, you can boot from that. That's how legacy PCAT worked. But GPT is a bit more involved. And that's okay. So we'll do master boot record. Uh, let me lay this out here. So I have these labeled. We won't need these outside of this function, but I may later move type defs to be global just to have them all in one place. I might do that right now, actually. I'll just have them all be in one place because we'll add other things later. And I kind of want this just to be a one file implementation sort of deal. So not really the best, but that's all right. I'll just have some structure here, which is you might think this is ugly, but I'm used to this from work. So I like laying things out explicitly like people do at work. Uh, but anyway, global type defs. Actually, let me do. Uh, minus signs for those. And these will be global variables. We'll have global constants and things later, but yeah. This will be a function. We'll just say write protective MBR. Just to delineate and differentiate things a little bit. Make it read a little easier for me. All right. We already write to the file, that'll be okay. So what are we gonna do for the LBA value? Well, I'm gonna have different values for the sizes of an LBA, for the size of the EFI system partition, the data partition, and other things. So I'm gonna lay these out here. Since UEFI defines an OBA as 64-bit, I'll just say it'll be 64-bit. Uh, the default size we'll do, I'll just have be 512. So a bit of a waste for eight bytes, but that's what I'll be doing here. This way we can change it later and hopefully be OBA agnostic. I won't hard code 512 anywhere. I'll just use the value of this variable. So that way we can hopefully support different sizes of disk sector or LBAs, maybe for like a 4K native drive or something. But later on, I'll have different things for the ESP size as well, the, the, uh, the EFI data partition. That by default needs to be a certain size for each type of FAT file system that it will contain. So that's just defined by the FAT spec itself. For FAT32, you need a certain amount of clusters and at the minimum disk size of 512 bytes and say one sector per cluster, the minimum size it needs to be is right around 32 megabytes. I'm gonna have it be slightly larger, which I'll explain through some bit of math later on, but I'm gonna have it be 33 megs for some padding and to ensure that we hit that minimum size needed for a FAT32 file system. So what is that in bytes? That's 1,024 squared, which is a kilobyte times 1,024. That's a megabyte times 33. That's 33 megabytes. Or, so I'll do that. I'll just say 33 megabytes there. And I'm not going to be that pedantic. I'll probably say megabyte. <laughs> that's fine. And our basic data partition, we'll say we have a data size, and that's also going to be some amount. Technically, we could make this a minimum of zero. I'm going to have a minimum of one in case we want to add files and stuff to it later. So you can change that. We'll have that be changeable, updatable through a flag later, passed on the command line. We'll just make it one meg for now. So our disk size at minimum is gonna be both of these plus some extra padding, which I'll lay out probably later. But right now, let's say we have this and we'll have like an image size overall. Let's just do that. Image size, 
we'll have that be, I don't think I can do this at compile time, ESP, ESP plus data. So I'll lay this out in main before we get to it. Um, and then we'll do other things down here. I'll also have the sizes for these things within LBAs. So I'll have ESP LBAs, uh, data LBAs, and image LBAs. And the reason I'm making these all globals is because they'll be used in several places. But I won't have that many, maybe just things for sizes and stuff. I'll fill some things out in here in main as we have these weird uh, syntax issues from compiling <laughs> with the question marks there. So let's say um, set sizes. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have flags that we set these later from. But right now we'll have the, the default things. So image size is going to be We'll have ESP size plus data size plus some megabyte value, we'll say. Let's say we have just one megabyte here. We'll change this later, but we'll add, we'll add some padding. Add some extra padding. And this padding will be for uh, the GPTs and MBR and stuff. Okay. That's the pat that's the size in bytes. We'll have image size LBAs as well, which we need to figure out how big the disk needs to be up here. That's why I'm going on this sort of big old tangent here. So I'm gonna have since I might do this in a couple places, I'll just have like a helper function or something probably to convert bytes into disk sectors or LBAs. So let's say we make a function for that. We'll say bytes to LBAs of our image size. And that'll be alright. So this down here too, we'll just say this is going to be main, just so I can easily find it. So, okay, bytes to LBAs, we'll do that. I'm going to have that be up here, convert bytes to LBAs. Let's say we're going to return an OBA value. Bytes to LBAs, we'll say we take in some number of bytes. And this is pretty easy, just converting these things. We can just do like a one-liner. We might be able to make this inline. The compiler should, I think, probably make it inline for us. So maybe I won't mess with that. We'll have a bar our bytes value divided by our LBA size. And to that, we'll add... Yeah, to that, we'll add our bytes modulo LBA size. And that will get, if we have a partial amount of bytes, like if we have something like 1,025 bytes, and our LBA size is 512. 1,024 would be two LBAs. 1,025 needs an extra one because it has a partial amount of bytes left over. So it'll need three. So in this case, if we have a modulo and it's greater than zero, we can just do a question mark, but I'll do greater than zero to be a little more explicit. And then we can add one, else we can add zero. Yeah, that way it'll add an extra LBA or it won't add any if it's evenly divisible. So that'll be okay. We'll just return that value. That'll be bytes to LBAs there. And that way we can use that because it's a global variable within write MBR. We'll have it here. So the only difference, or the only thing I'm gonna do here is, we'll say if our image size in LBAs is greater um, than our 32-bit limit, so one, two, three, four, because this is a 32-bit value, remember? Then what I'm gonna do is set it explicitly to that value plus one. So one and eight uh, zeros, yeah. One, two, three, four. So that way, since the ending LBA, I'm doing this because <laughs> I don't really need to, but the size in, well, it's the size in LBA, not the ending LBA, but the size in LBA is the size of the disk minus one. So in LBA is not in bytes, but in disk sectors. So we need to set it to this value if it's too large, but it should be disk minus one. So sorry for calling it ending OBA this whole time. I messed up. It's size and OBAs. If you're confused, that's all right. I confuse myself a lot. Just, just forget that it, that ever happened. So <laughs> this way, if we subtract one from this value, yeah, this way, if we subtract one from this value, it's always going to be clamped to this value as the max. So that's why I'm doing that. Image size minus one, size and OBAs. Image size and OBAs minus one. There we go. So if we make something by default that's 34 megabytes, it'll be that many bytes divided by 512 right now in OBAs. Uh, minus one would be the size because it starts already 
I bet I guess it's minus one because it's we're saying we're starting at sector two. So we have to subtract the first sector from the size and OBAs. We're not counting it in the size of this GPT partition because this MBR counts as the first sector, right? We're one after that, so we have to subtract one off. I think that's why they do this. But anyway, we can now check if it writes to the file or if I made a bunch of mistakes, which you know I did because I'm using Booleans and I need standard bool because those aren't built in keywords until C23 or 2x whatever it's going to be. Okay. Then we have undeclared and other things because I name things um, differently that aren't named. Image size and OBAs. Did I not name that up here? I did not. I named it image OBAs. Let's make it image size. There we go. Okay. So it made it, but if you didn't believe me, we'll do make clean and make it again. <laughs> and we write it and we'll have our Test image file, let me do, get how big it is there, 512. So if we do XXD and look at it, because if we try to do SGDisk and look at it, it's not big enough to hold any GPT info, just being one sector. Otherwise I would use this to verify, but we can't verify, it's too small. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use XD, XXD right now. So we'll have 440 bytes of zeros, and then we'll have our partitions that we defined in 16 byte chunks. And the first partition is gonna be at around 447, 448, this byte here. And it believe, it starts with, um, if we read it Little Indian, it's kind of backwards, it's a little odd, but it starts with the sector here. Well, it starts with an, an empty uh, boot indicator, but after that, we, we have the starting CHS, 00, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0. After that, we'll have the OS type, which is EE. Um, after that, we should have the size, the CHS size, which I think is, should be F, yeah, should be three sets of Fs. So I think that's right. And then we have the first sector, which will be one, two, three, four, one. Yep, because it's four bytes and it's just set to one. And then we have the size and OBAs, which will be, uh, in this case, I think it's 0117FF. I don't remember what that is. And I don't remember how to convert to a 16, a base 16 from base 10 in, in desktop calculator right now, so I'm opening the bad Windows calculator, but it's pretty good actually. So let's say we have 34, that's one megabyte. Let's say we have 34 megabytes, which I think is what I said it was going to be. 33 plus one, actually it might even be 35. Uh, so let's do that, four, eight, five, seven, six, 35 megs. Let's divide by our LBA size. So there we go, in hex, that's 11,800. We subtracted one because we're not counting the first one. And that's what the UEFI spec says. So here we go, 117FF, which is what we have, 0117FF. So that looks correct. And then we have the other empty partitions. Then we have the boot signature 55AA. So I think we wrote a valid MBR. Hey, so that's good. You can pat yourself on the back because this is gonna be the only easy episode we got. GPTs are a little involved with the GUIDs and uh, and CRC values for code that we have to write. And then the ESP, the fat file system in there is gonna be even more involved, so that'll be fun. But this will be a nice little intro thing to write in MBR in under 100 lines, so that's all right. Unfortunately, yes, I'm using globals and stuff, but we'll set these values later and we'll use these values mainly as constants past this point. But I digress too much. Hopefully the MBR made sense or I explained some of why it exists and what it's doing a little bit. In the next video, I'm going <laughs> to go over writing the GPT headers and tables. And then past that, we'll go to the EFI system partition. So that should be fun. Um, hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you then. So, cheers.